In the last episode I uploaded, we went through a whole bunch of news updates around the Cardano DeFi ecosystem, but I missed out on a lot of projects and that is because there are so many building right now and launching as well. So let's get into the rest of them. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate. Now, if you do like Cardano related content on your way through, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll get a lot more news updates around the Cardano ecosystem. But let's have a look at the general landscape for everything at the moment. If we have a look at DeFi Llama, I didn't go through. Look, look at this. Uh, I, I swear the first time this uh, was pulling in data from the Cardano ecosystem, we were only looking at about seven protocols. We've got 17 now that are growing and it's really good to see. So it's, it's taking its time to uh, fulfill and have all these projects launch, but we are definitely getting there. Now, if you have a look at our total lock TVL, where Cardano ecosystem is at uh, about 111 million at the moment, how does that compare to other ecosystems? We've got a long way to go. Uh, randomly, if you look at uh, Binance Smart Chain, they're at 6.3 billion. And then if you look at Ethereum, 34 billion in terms of uh, TVL locked on there. But of course, uh, they're, they're including all their staking as well, uh, which, you know, it, in the Cardano ecosystem, that's not counted because it's pure liquid staking. Whereas uh, their liquid staking with smart contracts is um, looked at in a different way and included on the stats here. But anyway, that's another battle we have to fight. Let's have a look at some of these protocols that are building on Cardano. The first one here is Optum, Optum Finance. They're doing those SPO bonds at the moment and their bond ecosystem is growing. And I really like, like seeing this. A lot of these uh, state pool operators are taking advantage of these bonds and getting a little bit more ADA, a boosted amount of ADA, 1 million, 1.5 million, et cetera here. And then having that delegated to their state pool. So it pushes them over the edge if they're a little bit low on the delegation side to be able to mint those blocks consistently and effectively. So that way they can provide a little bit of extra rewards for their uh, state pool delegates. Now here we can see uh, Mochi is going for a little bit more delegation here. They did, okay, there. so they did 500K and another 500K bond uh, and they're filling up another one already. So that's pretty cool. They're using this uh, mechanism effectively to try and get that extra delegation and uh, giving their delegates that little bit of extra reward. Their platform is really nice and um, I haven't quite set up a bond yet, but I will start playing around with this to see how it all works. And I will do a little bit of tutorial so that other state pool operators can work out exactly how this works as well. But here you can see all the various bonds at the moment. So these are the ones that are being issued where you can buy a, a share of this and uh, earn a little bit of extra ADA rewards off your uh, state ADA for this particular bond. So the way it works is you buy a portion of this and that ADA then gets uh, moved over to the state pool operator's control where they can delegate to a various state pool, usually theirs and then they pay out the extra interest or extra ADA rewards on top of that so that uh, you earn that little extra bonus on top of your ADA rewards. So that's the mechanism and the idea and concept of how it works. And you can see all the other state pool operators here that have issued bonds and have gone through the process already. And if you flip back to DeFi Llama, you can see Optum Finance, they're growing a little bit more every, every single day in terms of the amount of TVL locked on their ecosystem. Now here we have Indigo, they're doing the synthetic assets. So the IUSD, IBTC, IETH on the Cardano ecosystem. And that, that uh, price tracks the, uh, the current price activity, uh, price action of the various tokens. And their protocol is growing quite nicely as well. We can see here the total I asset market cap is at uh, 20 million ADA. So that means 20 million worth of ADA has been put through their platform to mint these uh, I assets, this IUSD, IBTC, I ETH. So it's really cool to see that one growing as well. And if you reference back to uh, DeFi Llama here as well, Indigo is actually ranked third at the moment in terms of TVL ranking with that uh, 15 million US dollars worth of uh, um, assets there. Uh, we can go in there and we can see the graphs and everything. So it's a nice steady growth uh, of that platform. So it's really good to see that Indy is doing so well at the moment. Axo Trade are still developing their platform. There isn't any official date of when it's going to launch yet, but it's 
probably the most complex DEX that is going to be released on the Cardano ecosystem with lots of really cool features that you'd find on a centralized exchange. I'll keep you guys up to date as more information comes out. But if you missed this, uh, the team actually went through their legal process around their tokens uh, earlier this year. And as a part of that, they decided to redistribute all of the rewards from their ISPO back to all of the delegates. You can see that here highlighted in this statement. I'll put a link to this Medium article in the show notes for you so you can read a little bit more about it. Now for when they do release their tokens, uh, they have, uh, from what I understand, minted their tokens and they're ready to go. So that's the official policy ID. If you're wondering about their tokenomics and token distribution, all of that is in this particular article as well. And again, I'll link that in the show notes for you so you can read a little bit more about this project. Another DEX that we should be seeing launch very soon. Now, I haven't seen any updates in regards to that this month or in January so far, but the Genius Yield DEX is going to launch sometime early this year, I believe. But they do have their staking mechanism, their staking platform already launched on the uh, Cardano ecosystem. So after their token generation event in, I think it was late December, they also launched their staking platform as well so that any of the holders of those GENS tokens could stake it onto their platform and earn a little bit of extra reward just for holding onto the tokens itself. Now, Marvin did do a really good recap of what they plan to launch this year. I highly recommend that you check that video out. There are no concrete dates. Of course, developers usually don't put those concrete dates in. It's hard to promise, especially when unforeseen circumstances appear. So hopefully we do see this launch early this year as well. Now, Meld is another project that is building a borrowing and lending protocol that brings some new innovations to the ecosystem. And they're almost through their private testnet phase at the moment. So I've seen a lot of the feedback that's gone through and they're almost finished ticking off that entire list. So almost, almost there. You can read out uh, more information about this on uh, this particular Medium post here that talks all about it. I have seen a couple of screenshots that were posted online as well. So we're getting there. We will be seeing the uh, mailed platform launch sometime early this year. Fingers crossed, we will see it. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get access to the test net uh, for this particular round. Uh, only 500 users were selected for uh, this particular process. So fingers crossed when they open it up a little bit more, I'll be able to have a look and play around with the platform and see how it compares to other borrowing and lending protocols out there, such as a fluid token using NFTs and AA to finance, which has been out for quite a while now too. So Ray Network have been working pretty hard on their entire ecosystem. They uh, started off with a wallet and now they've gone through the platform and started building out all these other things. So all I've seen so far is screenshots for uh, the various parts of their ecosystem that building. So this is Raypad here. So I'm assuming that's a launch pad of some sort. Then we have Ray Swap, which is a part of their deck. So you can see the various trading pairs, liquidity moving, etc and then token staking, so uh, part of their staking ecosystem. So maybe staking the liquidity pool tokens from their decks as well. So it's really good to see uh, the uh, visuals for this one and uh, the team working on it. Um, when they start delivering a little bit of code and something tangible that we can play around with, I'll also start covering it then as well. So we can actually see what it works and how, or how it works on testnet and everything else around it. Now, one of these other projects that are building a borrowing and lending protocol, but using NFTs. So uh, Paribus is very similar to Fluid Token, uh, where they are building out a borrowing and lending protocol using NFTs as collateral. So uh, they're doing some other aspects around it as well, but I believe that's their main focus and main core product delivery. Now, they're going through their audit, so they're very close as well. So if they're up to the audit process or up to the audit phase of their project, they should be looking at uh, delivering that on either testnet or mainnet very, very soon as well. So as soon as that one's out, again, I'll start covering that one a little bit more so you guys can know exactly how Paribus all works. And not to forget the, uh, I think Lending Pond were the first ones to launch their NFT collateralized borrowing lending pro protocol. They are going through their upgrades at the moment and going to V2. So I'm assuming brand new smart contracts, new features on their platform and everything else around it. So Lending Pond have reduced their fees to zero, a fat zero uh, from uh, the January the 16th until they launch their next version of the protocol. So it's really good to see that these guys are still building in this bear market as well. I know they've 
gained quite a lot of popularity as well. If we just go back to DeFi Llama, we'd be able to see their, them on here. There we go, Lending Pond, they're ranked 12th at the moment with $815,000 worth of liquidity on their uh, protocol there. So they're, they're doing pretty well and it's really good to see that too. Now, Matera, I haven't seen uh, major development updates from this team yet, but they're building out a portfolio-based decentralized exchange on Cardano as well. So uh, you can check out the interview I did in the top right-hand corner there. You can find out a little bit more about the protocol and how they're building and what they're building, what their focus is as well. It's a very unique focus. But they put up this little post here for uh, International Pizza Day. And I noticed that there's something severely wrong with this pizza. So I fixed it for them. Uh, that's, that's much better. Pineapple Pizza Day, that is much more appropriate. So um, you're welcome, guys. Mahen Stablecoin, they're doing their uh, fiat-backed stablecoin. It's community-driven process as well. So it's a little bit different to USDA from Emergo where it's not so much community-driven. Uh, they've been engaging with the Kadana community uh, broadly at the moment to uh, drive adoption of their platform. Now, because of the fiat-backed uh, stablecoin aspects there are a lot of legals and licensings behind it so this one i i believe i haven't spoken to matt and the team about this yet I mean, we're, you, we're yet to do an interview uh, but going through the licensing for all this and the regulation for it is very time consuming and would take quite a lot of money as well so i'd love to talk to matt about this and learn a little bit more about where they're up to in this process and delivering another stablecoin to the Kadana ecosystem so we have Jed, we have IUSD, we have USDA and USDM. So we have quite a few options of these various stable coins, as well as all the other bridge ones that will come in eventually as well from multi-chain and seller, etc. So those ones will bring in a little bit more of those uh, type of assets over the the bridge wrapped assets uh, for stable coins in the Cardano ecosystem. So we're just waiting and we're going to see a lot more of this uh, uh, stable coin activity in the Cardano ecosystem. Now, Flack Finance have been building diligently in the background to, for their mobile app to make the sending and uh, receiving of crypto assets really easy through their app. Now, they did go through a public sale that lasted for a couple of weeks in January, and uh, I believe they went pretty well with that public sale. Uh, they also have now launched their token and they have liquidity on the MinSwap DEX too. So if you're a bit behind or in that particular ecosystem, check your wallet. I didn't realize they had launched the token and done the airdrop already for their ISPO. I checked my wallet and went, oh, great. Okay, there we are. We've, we've got those tokens in the ecosystem now. And if you're interested in providing liquidity on a DEX, MinSwap is probably your best option at the moment because it has the most liquidity there. And we can see here other users in the ecosystem uh, getting into this project. And that's a, that's a fair dis decent amount of uh, flak finance tokens there as well. Now, their main focus is in India. That's the market where they want to uh, get into the most. If you want to learn more about the project, I did an interview with Ashish. Top right hand corner there, you can find out more about the project and understand exactly what they're building. Yam4 is a really interesting project that are building and they're progressing through their development as well. Unfortunately, uh, they're actually based in Adelaide and I didn't get a chance to, to meet Brendan in Adelaide there to catch up when I was over there for the holiday break. Uh, but they are releasing a whole bunch of screenshots in regards to their platform here. You can have a look at how it's looking at the moment. I, it, it's a very interesting style that they've gone for. But it's this uh, minimalistic console style uh, of uh, look to their uh, platform. Personally, I do think it's quite a nice approach. Now, if you didn't know about them, they're providing uh, DeFi loans as well. So uh, collateralized DeFi loans, but with no interest repayments and no margin calls, unlike a lot of the other borrowing and lending protocols. They worked out a particular way to do it with their uh, particular YAM token as well. The, uh, I can't remember what the token was called exactly, but if you want to find out more about that one, again, top right hand corner there, you can see an interview I did with Brandon that goes through the protocol and everything that they're building. Now this one here is pretty cool. Um, it's not a DeFi thing, but it's one of those uh, um, play to earn games. And this is Makossi Planet. Um, I didn't realize that they've gone through and launched. I did get to play with the game at uh, Rare Bloom, which is now called Rare Evo now last year. And it is uh, actually pretty cool. 
pretty cool. I did get one of their NFTs. I am a holder as well. So I can play in their ecosystem, bring in a character and uh, uh, go through the play to earn platform and see what it's really like. Maybe I'll get my uh, daughter to play with it and uh, earn me some crypto or maybe she can earn it, whatever. Now we can all start playing with this one. I'll put links in the show notes so you can have a little bit of a download and have a play of the game yourself. Now, if you missed this one here, Aneta BTC have launched the testnet version of their bridge for bringing in BTC over to the Ergo ecosystem and eventually over to Cardano as well. So having these options to bring over some of these traditional assets such as Bitcoin into the Cardano ecosystem is a really nice way to bring in that liquidity. Of course, there are bridges at the moment, the pre-existing ones such as multi-chain or seller, but they're seen more as centralized um, solutions, whereas this is done with smart contracts and is a decentralized solution. But have a look at their white paper, have a look at their details on their website so you can understand how the protocol works. Now, at the time of recording this, their, uh, their app is down at the moment uh, due to maintenance and uh, updates, etc. But uh, maybe uh, I'll leave a link in the show notes and you might be able to get in and have a little play with it. Now, because it is on Ergo at the moment, you do have to use your Nautilus wallet to be able to connect and play around with it. So check out the instructions on how to use it on Testnet and you can have a play and see what it would be potentially like when they move over and start uh, working on the Cardano ecosystem. Now, C-Swapper brings some different ideas to the DEX and DeFi ecosystem by combining it with NFTs. So their platform not only does the whole DEX and swapping and everything that you kind of expect within a decentralized protocol like that, but they're also doing the whole uh, staking with NFTs. So uh, anyone that has an NFT project can actually take advantage of this, not just their own ecosystem. If you have a look at their platform here, I'll just go to the cswap.fi website. And they've got uh, CSwap staking, which is their various uh, NFTs, which they have in their ecosystem. And you can earn some more of their uh, uh, CSwap tokens through staking on their platform. But you also have these partner ones here. So if you partner up with them and have your project within their staking platform, you can also earn some extra tokens through that particular process. So not nowhere near as much as you would with their their um, CSwap uh, NFT itself, but you do have that extra option there. So it's, it's kind of nice to have uh, that extra mechanism. So if you're building an NFT project, you can partner up with them, you know, do the cross, cross marketing and everything and give your users an extra little bit of utility to earn some other token within their platform. So that's a really nice mechanism and they're doing some really cool NFT Fi, that's what they call it, NFT Fi uh, on their platform. So please check that one out. So let me know what you think as well in the comments down below. Now, the last thing I'll mention is our own NFT project, which will be launching very, very soon. Now, this one here is around Cardano Press. If you haven't heard, we've been working on a plugin for the WordPress ecosystem and Cardano, where you can install this one little plugin and then it will give you all sorts of connectivity to the Cardano blockchain. So if you have a look here on our website, if you click that little connect button, it will allow you to connect your Cardano native wallet to the website and act as a single sign on system so it will let you it will set up an account and let you sign in on your wallet from there it could read what's in your wallet such as whatever nfts or token balances are in your wallet based on your policy id and then give you certain permissions on the site now this opens up a whole bunch of use cases from nft gated content to delegation gated content to all sorts of unique uh, and interesting use cases, which a lot of people have been taking advantage of. Now we're going through a whitelisting process here and using some of the mechanisms that we've built for Cardano Press. So if you're interested in minting this collection or if you're a state pool operator, what we're doing is opening up this whitelisting process where you need to delegate to a particular state pool. So we're opening this up to single state pool operators within a range of 5K ADA to 6 million ADA. And that puts them in a very small bracket of state pool operators, the X extra small state pool operators in the Cardano ecosystem. So we're going to select 10 pools from all the applicants. And if you're delegating to one of those particular pools, you'll be placed onto the whitelist 
be able to mint this NFT. So we're using all the mechanisms that we've uh, developed on Kadana Press for this process as well. So you, you guys, if you're building something in the Kadana and you are wanting to work out how you can do a wallet connector, how you can do NFT gated content delegation or anything else, this, this NFT collection will really showcase what the plugin is capable of. So I really, really am excited about this because it's going to bring a, a brand new tool to the Kadana ecosystem that will make it so much easier for anyone just to install WordPress with a couple of clicks, install Kadana Press in uh, another five minutes and get their site up and running with a little wallet connector and gated content, for example, straight away on their site. Now, if you're a state port operator and you are interested in becoming one of the whitelist pools, we do have a Google form link here. You can click on that and you can follow through the process uh, to submit your application to be one of the state pool operators. And we already have quite a few SPOs that are in the process as well. So this is uh, 46S or 46 South State Pool. And they've gone through and implemented Kadana Press so that you could easily connect your wallet and start delegating to this state pool within one click. So click on that, brings up NAMI wallet or whatever wallet I'm connected with at the moment and lets you connect directly and delegate directly to the um, state pool from the website. It makes it really quick and easy. It's a better user experience for delegates as well. Now that is it for me for this episode. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and watching all the way to the end. If you really enjoyed it, please give me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click on the notification bell. I have so much more content for you guys. I have about 14 episodes, uh, 14 interviews that I've recorded that I still have yet to publish just takes a little while to go through them and uh, get them all edited and in a concise manner so that uh, you guys can consume it. Okay, that's it for me for this episode. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research because it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future. Really, it ain't no debate.